Hello, this is Becca from Willow Hill Designs. Welcome back. Today I'm working on Roxy's Journal of Stitchery, Volume 5, and the prompt for this um, month is wearable, something wearable to slow stitch to create or to slow stitch on. And um, when thinking about that, I really couldn't think of anything. Um, I couldn't come up with anything. I did remember a jacket that I had made and I used to stitch on my jeans and I don't do that anymore <laughs> when I was young. I used to stitch on my jeans. Um, this is a jacket that I made out of, um, uh, it was a sweatshirt that we covered back in the day we did this. And I was thinking I could um, embroider something on here or um, maybe on the back of it. Uh, this is covered with um, uneven log cabin blocks and um, maybe something up in here I could embroider um, or along one of the sleeves, although I don't think it would be noticeable. But I, I noticed that I had forgotten it. It's all entirely lined and it's actually caught down. It's not like a typical lining. It's caught down by this binding here and I would have to take all of that out and I, I didn't want the stitching to show underneath. So I nixed that idea. Um, that one was quickly nixed. So I decided to go with something from one extreme to the other, something very small. And I was thinking in terms of this pouch that I made, this little pouch. I'll just come in a little bit closer here. And um, I made this pouch several years ago to put my thimble in and um, my seam ripper, my scissors. And it's something that you can just wear around your neck. It's just a little pouch. This was done with um, chenille crochet yarn, uh, chenille yarn, and I just crocheted and did some beading on it, some beading down at the bottom. And then there's a piece that goes around your neck. So I don't know what you would call this. It's almost like a chatelaine, but it's really not. I mean, but you could put your needle case in there and scissors, thimble could be like a chatelaine in a sense. So that's kind of the idea that I went with a wearable little pouch to put around your neck. And, and so this is what I came up with. And I just cut a piece of... Um, ivory wool felt to make this little pouch and then I covered it with some cotton fabric and you can see part of it here peeking through. I, I wanted some of these words to still peek through um, and the fabric looks like this. I didn't grab it out but it, it looks like this and it has all the names of flowers on it. Sorrel, um, marigolds, thistle and um, so I, I liked that look, and so I wanted to cover that. I suppose I could have just left those little pieces and put those patches where I wanted. That might have been easier. I could have just put some patches on there, although I think they're nice. They're brighter with the wool felt behind them. They have a little bit brighter look to them. So... Again, I did the same thing as the, the trifold pouch that we had before, thinking of the direction and the way that things would have to lay. And um, so to cover that fabric with all the little writing of the words on it, I used these little snippets that I keep next to my sewing machine. And these are little offcuts from a tilde quilt. And um, they're not even an inch wide by a couple of inches long. And I just use these as leaders and enders going through the machine. They're really too small to do anything with. I mean, I suppose you could really do some tiny piecing with them. But I thought that they were so pretty. And um, I used these. I thought these would make a nice little background for this pouch. 
before I put things on it. So that's what these fabrics, these are all fabrics from, from those snippets. And the other fabrics that are on here are some Dupioni silks that I had left over from our daughter's wedding quilt. And um, these are really beautiful. The edges are pinked because if you've worked with silk, you know that it ravels really a lot. But I love the hand of these. I even have this little heart, although I don't know. I may or may not use that on there. Um, I have these little pieces of silk. And so they also went on this little pouch as well. And just some little patches that I cut. And I invisible stitched these on as well. And the other thing that I had thought of putting on here is some of these little stamped patches that I've done stamped on muslin that I like. This is the flower that I put on there, but I have some other ones here. Lily of the Valley. This is a cute one. That could have been on there too. Hmm, I'll have to leave that out. But um, so I kind of liked that. And I will probably be putting this one on somewhere. I'm not sure if this will go on the back. This is from Beatrix Potter. This is, um, I think, from the, the Two Bad Mice or the Bad Mice, uh, her little book about that. Um, and I, or no, this might be the Taylor of Gloucester. I'm not sure. I think it might be the Taylor of Gloucester. Uh, so I think I'll be putting that on there. And also uh, this, I had stamped my name and I think I'll put this maybe under here somewhere. I'm not sure that may go on there as well. So some stamped images. And then I thought I would put some little snippets of lace on here as well. And just little kind of crumbles of lace, nothing too specific, just little tattered pieces maybe of lace um, here and there. Here's a little piece kind of bridging this top. There was a little edge from the piece that was sewn on here kind of sticking up so that with the netting kind of holds that down. So that'll sort of wrap around the front and also show up here on the back. And um, these are some of the laces that I thought I would use. This one I was thinking I may put here. I had originally thought of a larger lace, but I, I think it's too overpowering. And it also covers a lot of these beautiful fabrics, which I, I was going to do the whole thing lace to begin with, but then I I just didn't want to cover up the fabrics, so I may do something like that. A little lace edge there. Um, so that is one of them. But, um, and I, I think I'll be using a piece of this on there. I had thought of this Clooney lace. This may be, this may look nice, although that may be a little bit dark. I'm not sure. And I think I'll take a heart motif out of here and put that on there. Um, I'd like to use some of this. I think I may have snipped a little motif out of this lace to use. And just some little snippets. Nothing really too big. I may use some tiny little pieces here and there. Not sure. There's this one, which is very pretty, too. There's that one. I was originally going to do this here, but again, it covers, it is very pretty, but it covers all of that fabric down below, and I don't know if I want to do that. So that's a possibility. This is another pretty possibility. Maybe this flower here, somewhere on there, might be pretty. 
and there's this one which I've used a little piece of this I don't have much of this left but this is uh, this little piece that comes right over the top here that bridges that little piece that was kind of sticking up so this will be on there and I don't know if I'll use that other larger motif on there this is very pretty but it's I don't know does it get lost on here it is very pretty and it does let you see the fabrics underneath so I don't know maybe it's a little too light for this this is also very pretty this could be added somewhere so these are just some little snippets that I gathered out of here out of my laces I'll have to see what looks nice and um I have another one of these. This I may just decide to put over here and fold over the edge. Not sure. That may end up on here. This is the one that I absolutely love. I hope I've been in frame here. I'm not paying attention. <laughs> these are these little little crumbles or snippets up here that I of lace, just little tiny pieces that I'm enjoying adding. I just think they add so much to it. I just love all of this little work in between the motifs as well. I like the way that looks. Um, so that, those, those are the laces that I'm thinking of putting on there. I don't know about this heart. It is pretty, but it, it does take up a lot of real estate, and it does cover these fabrics. So not sure about that. And I may put some beads, um, not to the extent that I did on this one, but I may put maybe a little small grouping of beads just in the center of this at the bottom. I don't know, may do something like that on there. That's a thought. And for the neck piece, I was thinking that I would use this. And this is, um, this is just two selvages torn from some canvas, very light canvas weight home deck fabric. This had moose and bear and, and deer on it, rabbits. It was, it's a beautiful fabric, but um, I just tore the selvage edge because I thought it was so interesting, and I thought this might make an interesting piece to go around your neck, um, although it is very pale, I was thinking I could do sort of a buttonhole stitch or a decorative stitch along this folded edge here and bring some color, tie in the colors of this little pouch to this neck piece that would then go around your neck or you could hang on your stand, on your floor stand for um, for stitching. As, as I said, I think I said I have a floor stand with a hoop and a light and um, sometimes I will hang a little bag off of the one side of it just to house my scissors and a thimble and things. So this is a possibility for the little neck piece, but I'm not sure um, if I don't use this. Oh, I could even do that. I mean, and I suppose if you wanted to, if you were out somewhere tra traveling, visiting uh, a place somewhere you could, um, just use this to put tuck some money in and your credit card and just wear it around your neck and not have to carry your purse. So it could serve more than one function. I will probably be using it for sewing, but I could envision using it while out shopping somewhere, traveling with just your money and maybe a credit card in there. Um, so that's where it stands right now. And um, I think we have about a couple more weeks to go on this. So I'll just give you a little close up. Uh, I want to call this a Chatelaine, so I think I will. <laughs>
I've been following K3N, Catherine, um, at Sarah's recommendation, and um, I love I love what she says. She says, you do you. And she says, if you want to be precise, be precise. You don't have to be slapdash. You don't have to be, um, if you want to be concentric with things, if you want to do fine embroidery on these things, you can. If you want to be um, just very casual and rustic, you can. And I loved the fact that she said slow stitching is really more about the process more so than a way of doing it. Everyone does, there's Boro stitching in Japan and they have their designs. And of course there's um, the, um, the Kawandi quilts that are done and they have their own style and, um, but it's all slow stitching and it's all about the process, and I love that. I enjoy being precise with a lot of things, maybe because of the quilter in me. I don't know, also because my my nonny was an unbelievable uh, sewist, and I think I've always striven to do beautiful work like she does, and so I was set free. I, I It made my spirit sing to, to know that slow stitch there are no slow stitch police and there are no hard and fast set rules and you do you and i i just love that i have to give Catherine credit for uh, making my spirit sing that day and <laughs> watching her video <laughs> so thank you very much for joining me today i hope this has uh, provided some inspiration and i'm wishing you many blessings and see you in the next video bye for now